knowledge was the biggest thing in the ocean for us guys. You know, my dad would teach us, you know, how to fend for ourselves, how to survive, how to um, eat, and just how to be safe out in the ocean and stuff. And you know, it, it's funny because a lot of people would say if you're afraid or fear, and really fear is just not having the knowledge of what you're dealing with. The more knowledge you have of you know the ocean, the less you fear. So that was the things of. A lot of the things that my dad has taught us guys, um, from the youngest to the oldest, he would teach everybody about the ocean. He would throw them in a rip current and they would go down the rip. We would swim in 20 foot surf as small little kids and understand the impact zones and where's safety and, and those kind of things. And for us, it was on game. You know, and I remember when I was a small kid, um, me and my sister used to play tricks on the tourists. And then, you know, we would make it like fun going in a rip. And they'd be, you know, calling for help. My dad would actually save them and stuff until he kind of caught on, like, hey, these kids drawing his, you know, tourists inside, so. <laughs> it's been a long time, but you worked on Waterworld. Is that really you on Water, the left? That's me and Buzzy. <laughs> Buzzy Kerbox. They, they hired um, me, Laird Hamilton, Buzzy Kerbox, and Terry Ahui on Waterworld with about 50 of the best stuntmen around the world. Um, also, too, and we did some crazy things in you know, a matter of eight months on that show. But, um, you know, learned a lot from, especially the stunt guys. You know, in the industry of, of movie making, it's funny because you think the stunt guys is the craziest daredevil guys, but they're actually the most um, safest guys where they design the danger, create the chaos, but, you know, everything is in a controlled fashion, also, too. I heard a story, I'm not sure if it was during Waterworld, but apparently you were on a ski mm -hmm. and impromptu, part of your job turned into separating the actors from a big shark. Is that true? Oh, no. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I was one of the guys on the water. If you've seen Waterworld, we were underneath water as the Tratamaran was passing by. So we was doing that portion of that film. And we have this tower that drags the jet ski down. And, and it's actual skis that can run underwater. And um, <clears throat> while we're underwater, I have um, three guys under me, under my tower that, that's handling my ski. And then we have, um, how many skis? We have six skis, so three on each, each one and stuff also too. Um, Kauai High, really, really clean water. And this 15-foot tiger shark just mosey on right in front of us and just checks us guys out and just swims by and just looks at all of us. And I'm on, on the ski underwater looking at the shark, and I'm turning real slow looking at the thing and just keeping that ski between me and the shark, and it's swimming <laughs> real close. And I turn around and look to the side. Nobody's there. And look to the side. Nobody's there. And look behind me. Everybody's behind me. <laughs> <laughs> this is Blue Crush. Is that right? Yeah. Kate, Kate Bosworth. What, what was heavy was um, John Stockwell and Brian Grazer when they came. They had a meeting with me and Don King. And, you know, I tell you guys strengths and weaknesses. A lot of the times it's about, you know, knowing what the bad things in Hollywood, what happens, how things look, you know, the Frankie Avalon kind of thing standing in front of on screen. Um, you know, I told them that if they would give us the talent um, six to eight weeks and let us train them to feel at least comfort, you know, trust, and um, developing, you know, safety skills, those kind of things, giving them knowledge about the ocean. Then we have one fighting chance that it will be believable. Um, Kate's um, background was more in horse ride, uh, you know, riding horses and stuff. And then we had her for eight weeks, and we had her running, running rocks, um, swimming. Um, we took her to Waimea Bay the first day she came here and was really big, me and Brock Little. And I would sit down with her for two hours and not go in the water, and I would just color code um, Waimea Bay, where I would say, this is the green zone being safe. This is the yellow zone being cautious. This is the red zone being the most dangerous. But that zones tend to shift and move. And I would make her understand why, because of the, the depth of the water and how it breaks and the direction of the swell. So, you know, I said, we would just keep talking about these kind of things. And I would point out people like, you know, where they're from, what part of the world just by the way they walk on the sand, how they dress, you know. So then she was, how you know? I said, well, you know, most you know, people who live near, um, near shore, they would be comfortable in a bikini. People who inland, 
they'd be wearing more clothes and they got zinc all over them and stuff also too and they're wobbling on the sand they're not comfortable you know those kind of things and you can see people they can get in trouble before they get there so being a lifesaver you try to be proactive you know not reactive and you try to warn them about the, the imminent dangers those kind of things so she sees that of what we do with people and she really absorbed a lot of the knowledge of what we gave her and we got her to surfing some giant waves and she could hold her breath and she would paddle up to pipeline we'd show her the edge of pipeline of where you can you know dive in fact a lot of times i would have her without a leash so she's not tethered because i know that she can dive down to the bottom and get away from the surf and then one of our guys would grab him with the skis or we would swim her out of harm's way and those kind of things but um that's the whole thing with actors you know it's making them believable but making them knowledgeable well, there's no ocean in this next one. Maybe just water to put it out would be good. But what was this stunt? Well, I also, like I said, direct and coordinate. Um, this is the TV show Off the Map. And um, besides, you know, water is, is our forte of what we do. But we do um, driving, falling, fighting, fire, um, all this kind of stuff. So, you know, with fire, it's just fire is another element of danger. And you just have to understand um, the guy's wearing um, special gels, special shoot, um, suits and stuff also too. And then a lot of it's special effects and timing also too. Um, I actually, you know, use Mark Healy in this also too. So, you know, Mark's right in the middle of that whole thing, of that explosion, <laughs> yeah. We talk about the jet skis and you have pioneered a lot of techniques and traveled around the world a lot to teach other mm -hmm. lifeguards and, and different countries how to rescue people using jet skis, using the, um, the rescue sled that's on the back of the ski here. Mm -hmm. Did that just come out of um, technological development or just out of seeing a need and taking your experience and creating again? Well, you know, the, the real history really with the whole jet skis was, um, you know, back then we did all of our life saving and rescues with uh, swim fins, rescue tubes, rescue boards, and helicopters back, back then. Um, it was one of the ADI call contests at Waimea when I was surfing. <clears throat> and we had our water patrol on just surfboards watching us guys. And me as a lifeguard, there's times where I've actually lost people. You know, I paddled out to Macaw on a giant day trying to rescue a, a guy who was drowning. And he's calling for help. And he's pleading, and he's not too far away, but he's in the impact zone. And he's looking at me in my eyes, and he's asking me for help, and I, I can't get to him. And he's, you know, pleading, pleading, pleading. And then he got hit, never found him again. But till this day, I still hear his voice. I still see his eyes. And, you know, it, it always, it's always that part of you and stuff also, too, that the one that got away. And there's many times that we've rescued people, and we saved them and stuff like that, too. But a lot of it is, is luck. And then there's times where me myself, I become that victim myself, where I know that you know it's no one can get me. I need to just relax and get myself out of that situation, also too.